The deposition of sediment is important for understanding the formation of geological strata. So I thought that surely somebody would have already posted a short video of some mud settling in a container. I'm pretty good at searching YouTube, but I just couldn't find what I wanted. I did locate this short video, about four minutes long, that demonstrates the settling of some stuff in a cylinder, and there was a nice animation showing that particles of different sizes settle at different speeds. But the purpose of the video was to focus on the interface, and the author went into some technical detail that I didn't need. So I decided to make my own video with a bottle of muddy water, a graduated cylinder, my cell phone camera, and the software to record the time-lapse images and assemble them into a movie file. I'll cover each of these three components in turn. My cell phone is a late model Samsung Galaxy S4 on the market summer of 2013. The maximum resolution of the camera is 13 megapixels, far more than needed or recommended for web streaming video. Many professionals recommend shooting video for the web only at 720p, the standard for high definition. This corresponds to an image size of 1280 by 720. So I set my cell phone camera to its lowest resolution of 2048 or 1152, or 2.4 megapixels. The software that comes with the camera doesn't have a time-lapse function. As you probably already know, there's an app for almost every need. Because my phone runs on the Android system, I found an app called Camera FV5. And as they say on the TV commercial, I like the free version so much, I paid a couple of bucks for the premium version. It has an extensive set of menus that provide more functionality than I need, so I left most of these settings on the defaults. The most important settings may be changed from icons in the viewfinder. I won't review them all, just the ones I needed for making a sequence of time-lapse images. The light metering mode provides a number of settings. I used the matrix averaging option, which is the default. And I turned on the auto exposure lock for the light meter. I anticipated that the muddy water might be darker at the beginning of the exposure, and of course, throughout the time that the mud settled, the scene would lighten as time passed. So I locked the exposure to that at the beginning of the time-lapse sequence. That's a really nice feature in this program for when the level of illumination might change during a longer period of time. My cell phone camera doesn't have a separate macro or close-up mode, but it produces pretty good results within a couple of inches. FV5 has a macro icon and an autofocus lock, which I set, but I'm not really sure if it actually controls my phone's camera system. Now we get to the brains of FV5's ability to make a time-lapse sequence. Under the Shooting Utilities icon is the function called an intervalometer. You first set the intervalometer with the number of seconds between the recording of each image, and then the total number of images to be collected. But what number should I use? So I had to do a few back-of-the-hand calculations first. From a couple of preliminary experiments where I poured in the muddy water and let it settle, I knew that I'd want to shoot during an interval of about two and a half hours, the amount of time now constrained at the rest of the calculation that would depend upon the amount of memory in my phone. I wanted a short video, about 30 seconds long. Full motion video runs about 30 frames per second, so that meant I had to plan for about a thousand frames in the sequence. As each frame is about 250 kilobytes, that means I need about 250 megabytes of storage space, minimum, on the phone. That's not a lot of space, with phone memories now measured in gigabytes. This also emphasizes the advantage of shooting at a lower resolution than the maximum available for the phone camera. A lot less space is required. So at what interval should I set between shots? As I determined before the settling time to be about two and a half hours, those 1,000 images would have to be spaced out about every nine seconds. So now the intervalometer can be set for the shoot eight seconds between exposures, and a total of 1,000 shots. Well, I like even numbers. Finally, I'm ready for the big pour, and in the muddy water goes. Dinner's over, and I've got the kitchen counter cleared for the next two and a half hours. 
The camera has been positioned and focused on the bottom of the cylinder and it fires every eight seconds just as programmed. Over two and a half hours and a thousand images later, I've got a package ready to assemble into a movie. For that I need to transfer the images from the phone to the desktop and use another program.